Today, I'm going to teach you how to stretch, steam, froth, whatever you want to call it, your milk so that it is beautiful and silky, ready to pour amazing latte art. Alright, so firstly, it doesn't matter what machine you're on. All of the fundamentals that I'm about to teach you will apply it, whether you're on a domestic home machine or a big commercial machine. We just want to make sure we've got enough steam pressure so we can move the milk around. There is definitely some cheaper, smaller machines that just don't have the steam pressure to push the milk around the jug. And that makes it more challenging for you, but you can give it a go with these techniques. The other thing is good quality, high, full cream milk. Now you can use skim milk, you can use alternative milks and obviously apply the same reasoning and techniques. But if you want to produce that silky smooth milk that we're talking about for latte art, that full cream milk is going to be the best option for you. We also need to make sure that we've got a great pitcher, jug, whatever you want to call it, that you can put your milk in so that it moves the milk around the jug well. This is a 600 ml Rhino jug and I'm going to use it to spin milk. I'll probably have a bit of excess milk when I'm going into a cup this small, but it is going to allow me enough time to heat the milk nicely. It's going to give me enough time to add the air that I want and add the heat that I want. So that 600 ml jug is a really good starting point for any home barista or even cafe barista. So get yourself something like that. Something bigger than that's really challenging and hard. Something smaller is going to go really quick and that's the best way to get started. So first things first, let's make sure we have purged our steam wand. All of the condensation that comes out of a steam wand before you use it, if you're adding that condensation to your jug of milk before you even start, you're automatically watering down your milk and actually making it harder for yourself. The other thing is you want to get your milk levels right inside this milk jug. If I start with not enough milk, I'll be forced to have the steam wand go too far down the bottom and I'm not going to be able to get a good angle. If I fill it up too much, I'm going to be hesitant to let the milk spin and add air because it's going to overflow. So on a jug like this, if we're about at the spout, just underneath, that's a safe amount. But there is other videos that we've done on how to put the correct amount of milk in your jug because you've got to think about the air that you're adding. Check out the video, put it in the description below. There's lots of other videos on this. And I will say, we, are, we have a handy little um, thing for you. So stick around to the end of this video. I'll tell you more about that at the end. And there's plenty of other videos that you can watch like Luke's masterclass on spinning milk. This is just a quick guide for you. Cool, so we've got our milk. Now let's break it down. What are the main components that are gonna happen right now? So if I get started, happens a bit quick, so it's hard to talk through. What we wanna do, first and foremost, we need the milk to spin. You don't want the milk to be stagnant in the cup while you're heating it, you need it to spin. You want it to move, because that movement is what's actually going to pop the bubbles as you add them. They'll get smaller, and that's where you get those nice microphone bubbles. If you're not getting that spin, you're not folding the bubbles back through on itself and actually popping them, and that's going to create bubbles throughout your milk. So we want to make sure that we get that spin, and the only way we can get that spin is with the right angle. So a 45 degree angle of your steam wand to your jug is going to give you the best result. Now, like I said, you've got to make sure you've got a steam wand that can, can do that. But if I'm angling that on this machine it's all the way up, that's going to give me the best position for that steam wand to push around. Now, be mindful, if you're putting it down, you're shooting at the bottom and you're going to just create a bounce back of milk and you're going to get just, the milk's not going to move around the jug as it should. If your steam wand can go really high and you're finding yourself angling it too much, you're going to have a hard time as well. Another quick tip is to use the steam wand spout. That'll give you a bit more control. You don't run the risk of moving and everything shuffling. You don't have to stand still. Lock your steam wand into the spout of your jug there. And I also tell people, keep your jug flat. That means you can spin all the way to the top. You could fit a couple of cups in if you need to. But it also means that you're not looking over the top of it and doing all these weird angles. So let's lock our steam wand into the spout. Let's make sure that our cup is flat. Then we're trying, then the next thing we're looking for is where the actual steam wand is in the milk. So the milk needs to be 
you need to be just off center. We actually don't want to be against the wall. If you're against the wall, you're going to run the risk of it spinning in an awkward flat way and it won't actually spin the bubbles down. The closer you get to the center without actually being straight, you'll create a better vortex and you'll actually create more of a whirlpool and a vortex will actually suck the bubbles down. The way I explain that, as you go further in towards the center, you'll actually create more of a V-shape and the vortex will spin the bubbles down. And that's a technique as you refine this, you'll notice that as you bring your steam on closer to the center and that vortex happens, you can actually watch the bubbles get pulled down with the milk. So that's how you refine the craft there. So once we've got our position, we wanna make sure the tip is under the milk. If you turn on the tips above the milk, you're gonna get surprise bubbles and we don't wanna do that. We wanna hit, turn that on, we get our full pressure and we spin the milk around the jug. Once that jug is spinning, we wanna get the air in as early as possible. So straight away, we're just gonna slide down the steam wand and get the tip to the surface of the milk and just add small ripping sounds of air adding to the milk. Now, if I'm doing that flat white, I'm only adding for a second and then I'll bury the steam on. Latte, I'll do two, three to four seconds. Again, depending on the steam on pressure and the amount of milk I'm using and I'll add that air for longer for a cappuccino. And then when I'm happy I've added air for the right amount of time, I'll lift back up and I'll let the milk spin and I'll pop any bubbles that I have created and I'll let that texture just fold that milk back through and that's helping us get that shiny milk. I'm gonna keep my hand on the side the whole time so I can feel it go all the way from cold to hot. And then at the very, once I can't hold that anymore, I can turn that off. Again, if you've got a slow steam pressure, once you can't hold that, it might be a couple of second count before you turn it off or a high pressure commercial machine. Once you get some heat through, you can turn that straight off. That optimal temperature that we're looking for is 65 degrees. Now, if you want, obviously get yourself a thermometer buy the thermometer from our store and you can measure the temperature. You probably turn that off around 50, 55 degrees and that will continue to heat up until 65 degrees. 65 is optimal milk temperature, not only for, the, for your benefit, just the, the heat in your mouth, but also for the silky smooth milk. If you're overheating or even underheating milk, you might also get a difference in that silkiness. So let's put all of those elements, elements together and let's spin some milk. All right. Flat top, locked in, tips under, steam on. That's my spin. I'm gonna slide down to get rid of that screech. I'm gonna add air. Just making sure we keep that milk moving. Now, I've added enough air as I'd like, so I've got the tip under the milk, starting to heat up. Can't hold that now. And I'll turn that off. Always give that a good wipe and a purge. Now, any bubbles that have floated to the surface, I'm gonna knock them out. But you can see straight away, I haven't got any bubbles sitting on top of that. Nice and silky, nice and smooth. So I'm just going to get myself a little shot here. champion blend, grab yourself some of that so when you pour your beautiful latte out, it tastes delicious too. So this is my milk, this is the milk I just spun on that domestic machine, silky, smooth. Now it is important if you want to get that good latte out that you are doing this, this spin, you can knock out any bubbles but that's always the last step, is make sure you've spun so that when you go to pour, you've got this shiny, silky, smooth milk. And that is all the steps you need in your cafe or in your home to make beautiful, silky smooth milk. If you've learned something today, let me know in the comments below. Actually, before you go, I have a downloadable PDF that's gonna explain 
all of these steps and you can head to the link below to download that PDF. It demonstrates with, with imagery and descriptions all of the steps that I just outlined. It's something that we walk our cafe partners through and we make sure that we've got this guide to ensure that all baristas are consistent, everyone's making great milk, so you can reproduce great coffee every day. So head to the link in the description. You can download that PDF from our website. If you like the PDF, if you like the video, if you have any other tips, put them in the comments below. We'd love to read them and reply to them. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Heaps more videos to watch. And we're building a great community of baristas that want to learn how to make great coffee, steam beautiful milk, and also business owners to run successful cafes. So like this video and hit the bell icon. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.